Hey guys, I'm King of Dew, host of Dew News, and today I'm bringing you a basic attention token ICO analysis and overview. This will be a four part series, so make sure you subscribe to watch all four parts. The first part is just going to be a general introduction. We're then going to talk about the roadmap of the project. Uh, next, we'll do uh, leadership and budgeting. And the last and most exciting part, of course, the numbers and actual potential of this investment. You'll want to listen to all four parts to make sure you're well informed. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just bringing you information. One thing that I can bring you that you probably won't get many other places in relation to this specific ICO is I am a professional digital marketer. I can give you a lot of insight on the publishers and a lot of insight on the advertisers. You guys are all users. You guys get it. So when we're talking about users, I won't have to share too much about that. You guys got it. So I'm going to be focusing mostly on publishers and advertisers, as that's my profession. So buckle up. Here we go. I'm going to begin with an abstract read straight out of the white paper for you guys. And it goes like this. Digital advertising is broken. The marketplace for online advertising, once dominated by advertisers, publishers, and users, has become overrun by middlemen, ad exchanges, audience segmentation, complicated behavioral and cross-device user tracking, and opaque cross-party sharing through data management platforms. Users face unprecedented levels of maladvertisements and privacy violations. Mobile advertising results in as much as $23 per month in data charges on the average user's data plan, slow page loads, and as much as 21% less battery life. In response, over 600 million mobile devices and desktops around the world employ ad blocking software, and this number is growing. Traditional publishers have lost approximately 66% of their revenue over the past decade adjusted for inflation. Publishers face falling revenue, users feel increasingly violated, and advertisers' ability to assess effectiveness is diminished. The solution is a decentralized, transparent digital ad exchange based on blockchain. And that's what we have here, BAT. The first component is Brave, a fast, open-source, privacy-focused browser that blocks third-party ads and trackers and builds in a ledger system that measures user attention to reward publishers accordingly. Brave will now introduce BAT, Basic Attention Token, a token for decentralized ad exchange. It compensates the browser user, that's you guys. It compensates the browser user for attention while protecting their privacy. BAT connects advertisers, publishers, and users and is dominated by relevant user attention while removing social and economic costs associated with the existing ad networks, fraud, privacy, violations, and maladvertising. BAT is a, a payment system. BAT is a payment system that rewards and protects the user while giving better conversion to advertisers and higher yields to publishers. We see BAT and associated technologies as a future part of web standards, solving the important problem of monetizing publisher content while protecting user privacy. Okay, so hopefully you bared with me through that. Um, what I want to talk about real quick is my perspective as a digital marketer, and I work primarily in e-commerce. Now, in, in part of this abstract, it kind of got deep into the actual um, minutia of what my life is like, about the, about the challenges and the frustrations that we go through. Um, and I wanted to read straight from their website um, exactly um, what they believe the real challenges are. Um, the, these, this is like that are abstract bullet points with some factual data points um, that really describes what BAT is trying to solve. Um, the first thing they're trying to solve is you, the user, um, they're trying to stop abuse. Okay, so they want to solve that problem, the abuse that's happening to you. Um, essentially, as they said in the abstract, 
as much as $23 a day in data is probably, you know, you're paying for data to load an ad, to load background trackers to steal information from you and be used, right? You actually pay for that. That's not right. Um, the cell phone companies are, are winning because of this, and I'm not sure they deserve anything, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but we're using their data, and that's what you agreed to in a contract, so you're paying for it. Um, ads take about five seconds of load time on average on a mobile device. I'm not sure if you knew that, but in the background and in the facing uh, front of your application or your browser, you're wasting about five seconds every single time you load a page on average. Um, as they stated, your battery life is decreased. You literally um, are losing battery power. Every time you're loading ad, you guys know that when you're on the go, it takes up a lot of data and a lot of battery power um, is required to uh, send and receive that data. Um, your privacy is violated constantly. Um, and then, of course, there's malware advertisements. I'm not sure if you're aware, but um, as of late, there has been more and more reports of mal advertisements, essentially malware, built into an ad. So you are being served an ad at the same time you're being served malware. Um, it's up 132% in just a year. So a drastic increase in maladvertisement. So it's very unsafe. So they believe that they can fix that problem for you. Now let's talk about the publishers. Let's talk about the advertisers. Right now, Google and Facebook take about 73% of all ad dollars, and they're literally taking about 99% of all of the growth year to year. It's an unbelievably big industry, billions and billions of dollars, and they pretty much dominate it right now. Um, revenue is down 66% last year. Um, bots inflicted 7.2 billion in fraud last year. Um, so that one I can relate to. Essentially, if you build a website, you can then build bots to create fake traffic to your said site. Because you have all this traffic, your site is deemed valuable, even though it's not real. There's really no uh, human eyes on the site. But you do this, and then because you have this traffic, you offer your inventory, you offer your fake eyeballs um, for sale. And someone comes along, and an advertiser, me, uh, purchases it, and I get screwed. And the estimated amount of that is $7.2 billion. It's somewhere around like 10% of the entire industry. I'd have to go look up the exact numbers. Um, but that's pretty insane. I, I attend a conference called Programmatic I.O. It's the uh, premier programmatic advertising conference in New York. And last year, the entire time, every single panel, the word frog came up because it's such a huge problem. Advertisers are flushing money down the toilet, and it's not fair, but it happens. It's hard to control. There's not enough transparency. We're, um, the systems and ad networks are extremely complex. I literally use exchanges, just like a stock exchange, to basically buy inventory. Um, some people buy and sell inventory. Think about that. Like, you, There's exchanges where you can literally work it like a stock market and buy and sell inventory. People do this full time. So um, I completely relate with how we're hurting when it comes to fraud. BAT is a very real solution to that and I actually believe that the technology that they're using would actually solve that problem and that the top industry leaders I mean I'm sitting in the room with these you know Procter and Gamble right I'm sitting in the room with some big boys of marketing when I go to this conference and they're there they're listening and they're looking for the solution it's a huge pain point in the industry BAT will solve it over 600 million phones and desktops are running ad blockers. Okay, so that's obviously frustrating for me. But it's kind of a benefit. The way I kind of see it personally is like, you know, I even use ad blocking technology, and which is ironic, right? But like, 
So I get it from the user's perspective. I also get it that, you know, I don't think those people are going to look at my ad anyways, right? They're so frustrated with ads that they already don't want to work with it. So it's kind of nice that I can I can assume and that that population is removed, that I'm not wasting money on that population. So I kind of see it as a win, not really as a huge problem. However, the mass adoption of it is a huge problem. Um, at some point, I, uh, more than half the world is likely to have ad blockers, and that's not good. Because uh, I, I have it, you know, that's my job to serve ads digitally. If no one can see them, then we have problems. So, um, it's it's a, it's a really weird subject for me because I'm kind of stuck in between on my feelings on it. But um, hopefully, you learn something uh, through me on that. Publishers cannot seamlessly monetize value-added services. So it's really, really hard as a publisher to monetize your content, right? So if you actually have a website with high quality content, like a newspaper, that's basically the best example. Newspapers continue to go out of business. The ones that got div digitally savvy and got online quick, they're surviving, but everyone else is pretty much dead. But even the digitally savvy ones are dying. There's just too much content out there for free. Um, they do produce high quality content, much higher quality. I would actually much rather read theirs than what I'm able to see on Reddit most of the time. But it's just so difficult for them now to monetize it. It's, it's, it's just such a pain with all of the competition, all the exchanges, um, and all the technology they have to keep investing over and over again to try to keep up and change technologies it's very frustrating from a publisher's perspective okay so there's a little background on publishers and uh hopefully you guys learn something uh through my experience um in advertising and what that means to publishers um, but let's now talk about the challenges for advertisers specifically that bat is trying to solve Advertisers lack good information on what they are paying for. Absolutely. I don't know. I don't care. I don't care what level of advertising you're doing. You want to know what you're paying for. Right now, it's so complex that even even systems that like I actually have finally figured out what I'm paying for, like I know, right, as a professional advertiser. But when I go to my clients and try to explain it to them, they're completely lost. It is so advanced now that the average advertiser, the average marketer doesn't even know what's going on or what they're paying for. Um, it's a mess. It's a mess right now um, if you're an advertiser or a marketer. Um, Marketers are often fooled by bogus websites and bots that commit fraud. Just talked about that, right? Basically, about 10% of everything I purchase online is fake. That sucks. Enough said. Targeting is poor, making users more likely to ignore ads. I have a little bit of a disagreement with this one. I use artificial intelligence to serve ads. Right now I have campaigns running and I have artificial intelligence that's buying in, buying inventory, evaluating if it was a good buy in real time, and then deciding whether it should buy more inventory based on like click through rate and things of that nature. I also have that AI looking for specific things, you know, demographics, um, interests, lifestyles, uh, your shopping behavior. I, I have technology that I use to do that and to be able to target the, the right people at the right place at the right time. That's a win for you, I think, that that technology exists. It's also dangerous. I have the ability 
with my tool in particular to essentially target somebody when they maybe haven't even told anyone else something important. Let's say, for example, a woman just found out she was pregnant. What do you think the first thing she's going to do is? Probably panic a little bit, but when that's over, most likely have a million questions to go ask online. Those are flags and indicators that my system picks up on within a network of shared information. I can then start targeting her with products that I sell, prenatal vitamins and things of that nature. I'm using it with good intent, trying to put something that's relevant in front of them at a time where it's relevant. But guys, people can use it for a lot of evil if they chose to. This type of uh, information and technology that's out there could be used for bad. Think about it for a moment if you have kids. Someone with this technology could target your kid at a at a certain time in a certain way that and send them a certain message that you don't want them to see. So there's big concerns with what we call in the industry hyper targeting. It's just something to keep in mind, something I wanted to share with you. I don't believe that the targeting is poor. I think it's too good. And the poor part is the um, governance of it. Um, the issues around privacy. And um, so from my perspective, that's what I feel about targeting and the challenges trying to solve. So that's some high level BAT, basic attention token um, challenges and uh, problems that they're trying to solve and next I want to talk about um, the what is attention but first I'm going to read the introduction to you because it kind of leads into that so this is straight out of the white paper um, let's do the value proposition and the introduction the value proposition we propose that the BAT is a token of exchange in a secure, anonymous opt-in advertising system based in the browser and the mobile app web view. The BAT system provides users, that's this is you, a strong privacy and security when viewing advertisements, improved relevance and performance, and a share of tokens. So you get paid with BAT. So that's the that's a value proposition on top of those other benefits. Publishers, the people creating content, they get improved revenue, they get better reporting, they get less fraud. I'm all about better reporting. I love me some good data. They call me big data at work. I just call myself that. But um, and less fraud so that I know what I'm spending. I'm actually getting real results in the reporting. Advertisers. Less expensive customer attention. I like that. I like cheap advertising. Less fraud. Sign me up and better attribution. Absolutely. So here's the introduction and listen carefully. This is a this is a really, really great quote. And I think it really sums up this entire video pretty well. Attention has been widely recognized as a commodity. Like wheat, pork bellies, or crude oil, existing industries have long depended on it to drive sales. And the new industries of the 20th century turned to it in a form of currency they could mint. Beginning with radio, each new medium would attain its commercial viability through the resale of what attention it could capture in exchange for its free content. The promise of advertising technology was to create a more efficient marketplace for attention. The hope was that the internet, the latest kind of new medium, would arrive with a transparent and efficient ad marketplace. 
In theory, excellence would be rewarded. The best journalism and entertainment would receive the attention and funding it deserved. Ad tech would get marketers closer to their users via data analysis, immediate valuation, and distribution. Data would be used to accurately identify audiences, determine the value of those audiences, and deliver the right messages to them instantly. In short, users' attention would be valued properly. That did not happen. Instead, the ad tech ecosystem that has evolved over the last two decades is bewildering, full of middlemen and complexity. Worse, ad tech introduced a host of correlated problems for publishers, advertisers, and users. Users have lost their privacy. They face increasing malware, high, pay high charges to download ads, and suffer slow speeds. Publishers have lost billions in revenue while fraud has skyrocketed and advertisers face poor reporting and targeting. So there you have it. That's the introduction to the BAT white paper. Um, next, I want to just talk a little bit about attention um, and essentially what that really means. So marketing works like this. There's four high level arcing key performance indicators that marketers look for. And the most important one is conversion, obviously purchasing. We want to measure that. Next is engagement. Engagement is you talking back with me or engaging with me in some way, like tweeting back to a brand. Then there's attention. That one is almost, in, it's so difficult to get I, you know, actually having someone's attention, um, just like right now, if you're listening and I have your attention, man, I wish I could have that to tell someone about a product I'm trying to sell them, right? Um, that's what we do as digital marketers. Um, and then visibility, you know, there's tons of concerns with marketing right now. I pay for a lot of ads that load at the bottom of a screen. You'll never see it, but I paid for it, right? I, I would like to know if you even saw my ad. Good news is, is BAT actually is, it's in the roadmap. We'll talk about it more in the next uh, video, but they actually are going to be able to measure that. And that's exciting. So my perspective is this tool is filling in some gaps for marketers that they don't have now in regards to measurements. We're... We're, they're going to be able to measure visibility better than ever, ever before. Uh, they're going to be able to measure attention better than anything I've ever seen online because they're building it into the application. And um, conversion is always going to uh, be what it is. I, I, there will never be any additional um, technology. The technology already exists for tracking those type of events, but... Um, and engagement is pretty straightforward. Um, you have a tangible result. You can see that someone's engaging. But that attention, how do I know someone's listening to my ad or reading my ad, right? Or watching the video ad that I put out there. You know, just because they played it didn't mean they paid attention to it, right? Interesting. So, that's it, guys. For this first video. Again, I'm King Adu. I'm the host of Do News. If you like this type of information, if you like this type of perspective, make sure you subscribe. Give me a like. Down below in the comments, you can also f go to Steam It. Follow me on Steam It. Um, I'll show up in your feed. You'll never miss a video. But you'll definitely want to subscribe if you want to hear the next three videos on BAT. I hope this was valuable to you guys. Um, and I hope that you'll come back for the next one. So I'll talk to you then. And again, as always, I'm King Adu. May the force be with you. And I'll see you next time.